So where should I start with reading the Bible? If that's your question, or you're just unsure about religion or Christianity in general, then you're in the right place because that's what we're going to cover tonight. Now, the first thing I want you to know is that the Bible itself is not written by one author. The Bible is 66 books that was written over a long period of time by multiple different authors. Okay, it's separated into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is God's discussions of his dealing with his people, Israel, the Jews. And the New Testament is the discussion of what has happened since Christ came. Jesus Christ, Messiah came and he died for his people. Then the New Testament is a description of how Christianity began to grow and spread and how Christians should live their lives in light of the truth about Jesus. Okay, so that's the Bible. That's the whole book. The first thing I want to answer in terms of this question is where should I begin? You should begin in the New Testament because that portion of scripture has more direct relevance to our lives. Don't get me wrong. The Old Testament is very important, but it's a little bit more advanced how you take concepts and principles that applied to a certain people in the Old Testament era and how you make them apply to people in the New Testament era. Okay, that's a little bit more complex. And so I'm always going to recommend that people start with the New Testament. And that's where we're going to begin with our study tonight. I would recommend the following path in general. We always tell people to start with the Gospel of John first. The Gospel of John opens this way. There are two books written by, well, multiple books written by John. But you know you're in the right one if the first verses are, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's how you know you're in the right place. This is a great book of the Bible. It introduces you to who Jesus is and what he did, and it describes his character and nature very clearly. So that's why we almost always tell people to start with the Gospel of John. After you read the Gospel of John, I would recommend one of two paths. Either go to the book of Romans after you read the Gospel of John, and the book of Romans is written by Paul the Apostle, who was radically converted to Christianity after he persecuted Jesus' people. Now, Romans is a great book because it describes, essentially, how we are saved. How Jesus' death on the cross actually saves us. And so, Romans is a great book to just get going and get a good understanding of the gospel message from that perspective. So, start with the gospel of John. Once you finish John, Romans is likely going to be a great book to go to. The other option you have is if you want to look into the history of the church, how the church grew and developed into what we have today. That's found in the book of Acts, found right after the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. And in the book of Acts, you're going to get a broad overview of how the church grew and developed from the beginning. You can start with the book of Acts itself, or you can start with the Gospel of Luke and then move to the book of Acts. The reason I'd recommend this is because Luke is the common author between Luke and Acts. Luke writes Luke and Acts. It's like a two-volume series that he's writing on the topic of Jesus, who he is, what he did, and then how his church grew and expanded after that. So I would start with the Gospel of John. You can either move to Romans after that or do Luke and Acts and then go to Romans. Both are really good. Finally, I would recommend you go to 1 John. And the reason I recommend 1 John is the question in 1 John that John is trying to answer is how do you know you're really a Christian? How do you know you truly believe in Jesus? How do you know that you're saved and you're following after Jesus with your life? This is a question that a lot of people have early on in their walk. So once you've read the Gospel of John, Luke and Acts, and Romans... Now you can go to 1 John and look at the implications for how you live your life, what that means, and how you know you're truly a Christian. And so these are the first books I would recommend you start with. Note that they're all in the New Testament. None of these reference the Old Testament. Not that the Old Testament isn't good. It absolutely is. But these are your starting points. A few other things that I would recommend. I would recommend the book of Psalms if you struggle emotionally. If you have a lot of emotions or feelings associated with your relationship with God, read the book of Psalms. Not all of it, maybe just a handful of Psalms here and there. The book of Psalms is 150 prayers to God, and you can read them and get a good understanding of what it looks like to pray to God for yourself. So Psalms are a fantastic book for that. The other thing I would recommend is there are a lot of people who struggle with wisdom, knowing how to live their life well and properly. This is the book of Proverbs. If you are looking to Christianity for some practical help in how you can live, the book of Proverbs delineates true Christian living in a proverbial way. 
do these sorts of things, don't de do these sorts of things. And it gives you a good understanding or idea of what living by wisdom would look like. So those are just a few recommendations. I could make many more, but these I think are really good places to start. Psalms and Proverbs are both in the Old Testament. And there are other good books there as well. I'm now going to move into four principles to keep in mind when reading the Bible. First, read prayerfully. Read prayerfully, guys. This is something where it is naive to think that you're just going to be able to step in and fully understand the Bible. Christianity says the Bible is God's word, and we're going to need divine enlightenment. We're going to need God to open up our minds to understand what we're reading. There is a passage in the New Testament with Philip going and preaching the gospel to a man from Ethiopia. And he says, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I unless someone explain it to me? Now, the best person to explain the Bible to you is the Holy Spirit. And that comes from God. So I would recommend that you read prayerfully. It's very important. This is God's word. And if you're going to understand it, what it's saying, you're going to need the Holy Spirit to open up your heart and mind. Okay, very key idea. So read prayerfully, and that is going to be a great start to you reading. How do you do this? Just before you start reading, you sit down, you got the book of John open, you're on chapter four, and sit down and pray. Father God, please help me to understand what I'm reading. Please guide me and direct me so that I might know or understand how to apply it to my life. And I pray that you would help me to see your truth. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Something as simple as that, reading prayerfully, asking God to open your eyes is very, very key for Bible reading. I'm going to add meditation to the list here. So read meditatively. What do I mean by this? Well, when you read the Bible this way, you are meditating upon the truths of the word. You can also do this by memorizing certain portions of scripture, certain passages that really impact you or feel meaningful to you because it keeps God's word fresh on your mind and in your heart. And so reading meditatively, I think, can be very, very helpful. You read prayerfully, but you always also read meditatively. Repeating the words to yourself, trying to get a better understanding of what they say and what they're communicating. I think all of these can be very, very nice things. Okay, so read meditatively as well. And I think that biblical meditation can be very, very good. So that's read prayerfully and read meditatively. The next principle to keep in mind while you're reading your Bible is to read for Jesus. What do I mean by that? Well, John 539 says this. Listen to what it says. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Do you see that? Jesus says the scriptures testify about him. People are studying them diligently because they think they're going to find eternal life in them. And he says these scriptures testify about him. That is the point. All of the scriptures, guys, point to Jesus, are built around Jesus, are focused upon Jesus. Old Testament, New Testament, doesn't matter. So when you read the scriptures, you are reading for Jesus. You're trying to figure out who Jesus is, what he did, what God's doing through him, and how Jesus' death, life, burial, resurrection, all that stuff applies to you. Okay, so when you read your Bible, read for Jesus. There's actually a passage in Luke as well, where it's Jesus on the road to Emmaus. He runs into two disciples and it says he went through the scriptures with them, explaining all of the scriptures and how they spoke of him. It's very important as you read your Bible to read for Jesus. Jesus is the central figure of all of the scriptures. I said before, it's 66 books written over a long period of time by many authors. Yes, but God's point and purpose in giving us the Bible was to point us to his son. And so always read for Jesus as you read your Bible. Now, there's another principle I want you guys to remember as you're reading, and that's read for faith and application. We make a mistake in Christian circles by essentially telling people that the purpose of the Bible is to just teach them information. That's not the primary purpose or intention of the Bible, not to teach you information, but to lead you into transformation. Okay, very, very different ideas. Listen to what James says. James 1, 22 to 25. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do you hear that? Don't just listen to the word. That's deceiving yourself. He instead says, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently at the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Reading your Bible is not merely for information. It is to get some information, but it is meant for your transformation primarily, that you would actually read and apply what you hear. So read for faith and application. Read that it might transform your heart and your mind, and you might be able to apply its truths to your life. 
After you finish reading a passage, ask, stop and ask yourself, what does this mean for me? What sort of application does this have for me? Should I live my life differently based upon what I've read? One other principle that's very, very important, guys, is that scripture interprets scripture, okay? Scripture interprets itself. Now, the reason this is so important is because some parts of the scriptures are hard to understand. There is a verse in Peter, 2 Peter 3.16. Listen to this. This is Peter talking about Paul's writings, okay? Paul makes up a lot of your New Testament. He writes the same way in all of his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures, to their own destruction. Listen, his letters contain some things that are hard to understand. Guys, as you read the Bible, there are some truths in it that are very straightforward, obvious, easy to apply and understand. That's fantastic. But there are also some passages that are hard to understand difficult, and just the sorts of things you're going to have to wrestle with. When it comes to this, guys, remember that scripture interprets itself. Scripture interprets scripture. Use the easier, more obvious passages in the Bible to help you understand and interpret the more difficult passages. For example, the book of Revelation is a very difficult book to understand, and there are a lot of interpretations of it. And a lot of Christians love to park in the book of Revelation and hang out there and spend tons of time in the book of Revelation. I would say that you should get your theology primarily from the other more obvious and clear books of the Bible, and then you should use that clear understanding of the other books of the Bible to help you understand Revelation at a later date. It's just helping you to use the principle of Scripture interpreting Scripture. I think that's very, very important. Okay, guys, so remember, you can start with John, Luke, Acts, Romans, 1 John. These are all good books in the New Testament to read. You've got Psalms, Proverbs. Those help with wisdom and with your feelings and your emotions. And then also our five principles. Read prayerfully, read meditatively, read for Jesus, read for faith and application, and also remember that scripture interprets itself. My last two tips. I gave you where to start. I gave you five principles for just starting in your reading. Finally, guys, I have two tips, two things you should pick up. First, I think it is very helpful to get a good study Bible. Why do I say this? Like I said earlier, scripture needs to interpret scripture, and many of the passages can be very hard for you to understand. What study Bibles are, guys, are they have notes down underneath the passage themselves. So you'll read the passage, 2 Peter 3.16, and then a study Bible will have notes down below it to help explain those verses for you. So here, 2 Peter 3.16 says, he writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. So that's the passage itself. But if you open that passage in the ESV study Bible, here is what the ESV study Bible says. This shows awareness of some kind of collection of Paul's letters with a number unspecified here. Some things are hard to understand does not say that everything in Paul's letters is hard to understand, nor does it say that anything is impossible to understand, but it does imply that correctly interpreting some hard passages of the scripture requires much effort and God-given wisdom. Look at that note. That's going to help you as you're reading through the passage. It stops and explains the passage to you more clearly and helpfully. Now, I have a list of study Bibles here that I can recommend. There are a lot of good study Bibles. Which one you buy is probably going to be dependent upon what version of the Bible you prefer. This one's the ESV study Bible. It's the ESV translation. It's put out by Crossway, one of the most excellent study Bibles on the market. There's another one that I really like called the NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible. This one's in the NIV translation, guys. NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible, NIV translation, editor D.A. Carson. I'm a big D.A. Carson fan. That's part of why I like this study Bible so much. Good information here. I also like the CSB. Holman has done a great job bringing their study Bible up to par with some of the other good study Bibles on the market. And so the CSB study Bible, Looks like this is a very good study Bible as well to get. Look, three different translations, ESV, NIV, CSB. Now, if you're not sure on any of those translations, I would recommend the MacArthur Study Bible. 
MacArthur Study Bible is very, very nice. And one of the cool things about the MacArthur Study Bible is that it can be had in multiple translations. So he has a MacArthur Study Bible for the NASB and for multiple translations, okay? I like the MacArthur Study Bible quite a bit. Now, I do want you to know its notes are not quite as well-rounded as some of these other ones because it's specifically from MacArthur, but his notes are still very good. And he has a lot of notes that you're going to find some insights that you won't find in some of the other study Bibles. So the MacArthur Study Bible is very good. There's also a study Bible put out by R.C. Sproul's group called the Reformation Study Bible, and that's a very good one. Now, there are two versions. I would, I recommend the newer version because it's much updated, okay? This is the older version. This one's been out for a long time, the Reformation Study Bible with this cover, but they put out a new version, and it looks like this, and I would highly recommend this version as well. Reformation Study Bible put out by R.C. Sproul and Ligonier Ministries. And it's a very, very nice study Bible. And I like this newer one that's updated. There's also a couple of study Bibles that are a little more niche, but they might be interesting, especially if you already have a study Bible or something like that. Okay. There's the NIV cultural background study Bible. One of the challenges you'll have as you read the Bible is it was written for an audience that's very different than you. You live thousands of years after many of the books were written. And oftentimes you won't understand the Jewish culture or society, Roman culture or society. A cultural background study Bible like this will draw your attention to those things that are unique about the culture and society of the book you're reading. So this is a little bit more niche, but it can really fill in some gaps for you if you're having a hard time understanding the concepts that are being presented. Finally, guys, there's an ESV systematic theology study Bible which I think is very, very cool. And this study Bible has all sorts of systematic theology topics built into it, which is very, very handy. Systematic theology is simply this. It seeks to answer what does all of the Bible teach us about this particular topic of study. So it tries to sum up everything the Bible has to say about major or important topics of the faith. A good systematic theology, and here a systematic theology study Bible, can do wonders for helping you organize all of the Bible's themes and concepts under one banner, under one heading, okay? So the ESV Systematic Theology Study Bible is very, very nice for that. So those are eight study Bibles that I can recommend. Oh, Ivory John has another recommendation. It's the Apologetic Study Bible. Now, the Apologetic Study Bible is very helpful for those who are running into skeptics or a lot or have a lot of questions for themselves about the faith. They're unsure about it. They don't know what to say or to do. And so we can add the CSB Apologetic Study Bible to this list as well because as you read it the notes that it has in it are meant to help you defend the faith they're meant to help you answer tough questions about christianity so if you personally have tough questions it's great to get an apologetic study bible or if you're dealing with people who have a lot of tough questions it can also be a good resource okay guys so those are good study bibles now this last one this esv systematic theology study bible that i brought up there's a reason i brought that one up where i did because if you want to go even deeper then you want a good systematic theology. What is a systematic theology? A systematic theology takes, seeks to take everything that we know about what the Bible teaches on a specific topic and systematize it, okay? If you get a good systematic theology, they cover the biggest topics of Christianity and they help to organize those into a systematic you know, framework so that you can better understand. My most recommended systematic theology is Wayne Grudem. Okay, that's the first one that I would recommend. You know, he's Baptist, I'm Baptist, that's part of why. But look at some of these chapter headings, guys. Chapter one, introduction to systematic theology. What is it? Why should Christians study it? How should we study it? Part one, the word of God. The word of God. The canon of scripture. The four characteristics of scripture. The inerrancy of scripture. The clarity of scripture. The necessity of scripture. The sufficiency of scripture. Part two, doctrine of God. His existence. His knowability. His incommunicable attributes, his communicable attributes. On and on you go. The Trinity, creation, God's providence. If you are seeking to have a better understanding of what Christianity teaches based upon the Bible, you want a good systematic theology. Now, if you have the ESV Systematic Theology Study Bible, that's already setting you up for success in this area. That's already putting you well on the road to success. But if you don't have the ESV Systematic Theology Study Bible, you can get yourself a good systematic theology, okay? I have four recommendations here. There are tons more of the good ones. My favorite one is Wayne Grudem, and they're actually recently come out with um, an updated version. So this is Wayne Grudem, 
Systematic Theology, highly recommended. I can also recommend Burkhoff. Okay, Lewis Burkhoff, Systematic Theology. Um, it often comes in a purple book. It's a purple thick book. Burkhoff, Systematic Theology can be very nice. One of my favorites, this is a little bit more off the beaten path, but one of my favorite systematic theologies is Robert Raymond's Systematic Theology. A New Systematic Theology of the Christian Faith by Robert Raymond. I love this systematic theology. This was one of the first ones that I dug into in depth, and I absolutely love it. He quotes scripture liberally, and so it's very, very nice to see how the scriptures apply in those areas. Okay, so very important systematic theology there. And then John Frame has recently written a, a systematic theology. And I haven't gone into it in depth, so I haven't read, you know, all of this one. I haven't read this one nearly as much as I've read the others. But I've utilized John Frame for a very long time on many other topics. And the fact that he has written a systematic theology is fantastic, right? Systematic theology is the culmination of creative synthesis of John Frame's writings on and teachings about and studying of the Word of God. This magisterial opus, at once biblical, clear, cogent, readable, accessible, and practical, summarizes the mature thought of one of the most important and original Reformed theologians in the last hundred years. John Frame's fantastic. I love his stuff. And his systematic theology is a fantastic addition, right? So I think you're going to get a lot of value out of that, okay? So a good systematic theology can be helpful as well. And I'm going to be honest, guys. Once you're reading the Bible regularly with these principles in mind, once you've got a good study Bible and you've got a good systematic theology, guys, you are well on your way to mastering the Word of God, honestly. If you will continue to read prayerfully, seek these things out, you don't need thousands upon thousands of books. You just need a handful of good resources and you need to read prayerfully, meditatively, looking for Jesus, having faith and applying the word and letting the scriptures interpret themselves. Once you've done that, you're well on your way to being very successful in understanding God's word. So that's my summary. I don't have anything further that I wanted to talk about at this point. I just wanted to kind of emphasize some of those key ideas because so many people don't know where to start. And this seems so straightforward and basic to me that I just repeat it for people when they come in and ask, but what better way than to give you guys a little bit of an introduction to the topics and create a video out of it at the same time to go ahead and help people. Hey there, the heart of our channel is interaction and community. We would love it if you would leave your comments and questions down in the comments section, or if you would head to our Twitch and Discord and leave your comments and questions there, we may feature them live on the channel. Thanks for being here. Take care. God bless and bye now.